Hey everyone, welcome to the M5 All Team Workshop Series Part 2. I'm Jimmy, Chris is here, Remy will be joining us shortly. Today we're going to kind of hop into All Team for the first time. Uh, right now I'm sharing my screen, uh, I am in All Team Designer 20. If you're starting up All Team for the first time, you're going to get a, a, a login window. And once you log in with your account info that you've been using to download the software, you'll see this screen. So this is a license management screen. It's, this is, um, what's in this list here is a list of every Altium license that the university has had. And unfortunately, it's a mess. And probably by January 1st, we'll have another one. It's important to choose our most recent active license uh, in order to be able to use the software. And all these expired licenses just won't let you in. Um, so the one that we're currently using is this GER6 V2E3. It's easy to tell even without the number. It's the only one that doesn't say expired and it has 51 seats in it, meaning there can be 51 concurrent users. Once you uh, choose your license, you click use, it should end up at the home screen. This is not the home screen. This is a schematic that I've been working on, but we're gonna take you through the process of kind of getting used to Altium, the interface, important things you need to know. Unfortunately today, I don't have a mouse with me. I highly recommend anyone when you go to use Altium, have a mouse. Uh, it's, you're gonna have a hell of a time if you don't have a mouse. Uh, as well as a full keyboard, if that's possible. A lot of functions on Altium require the, just keyboard and mouse combinations. So I think the first place to start is this tab over here on the left part of my screen. Specifically, this is, the pro, this is called a panel. So there's a bunch of panels in Altium. You can always access the full list of them down in the bottom right corner. You can link them up to either the left side of your screen or the right side of your screen. The left ones usually stay across whatever view you're in for different file types, and the ones on the right change depending on the file you're in. So this here is the projects tab. It's the one you're gonna pretty much always want to have open. This is where you're gonna access anything you're working on. Uh, in the last video, we went into different file types in Altium and the kind of hierarchy. All your files for a single project are kept in a project folder, and that's kind of like your whole board overall. And then within your project, you have source documents, which are your schematic and your actual PCB layout, as well as libraries if you have custom components for that project. When you want to start a new project, you'll come over to this project tab here. You're going to right, right click in it and choose add new project. Anything you're going to use for SDP, you recommend to just use the default project type and you're going to name it. So we'll call this workshop. Create your project, and you can see there's a new, whole new project file here, if I close up my old one. Now, you have this project, but there's nothing here, really. The first place to start is always to your schematic. That's where you're going to define your electrical connections. There'll be, a next video will go more in detail on how to build an actual schematic, but here we'll just add new to project, schematic, and boom, you have your schematic. Jimmy, can I hop in for one second? Yeah, absolutely. Whenever. So one question that I've had before um, from people who haven't used Altium is why we even need to make a schematic? Why can't we just start right on the PCB and start putting components down and just go from there? So maybe that's worth explaining. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, the point of the schematic, like I said, is to define your electrical connections. And it's kind of a reference point for the software when you're designing your actual PCB layout. Um, you know keeping track of a really complex PCB, all the components on it is near impossible. So it's better to give the software your connection definitions at the start and let it kind of handle that from there. Yes, you have to draw the traces yourself, but it'll remind you what parts need to be connected to what parts and so forth. And it'll like realize any errors that or any connections you've missed when you are designing your actual layout. Right, so that way when you finish designing your PCB, Altium can refer back to your schematic and say like, okay, did you, did you really do what you set out to do? Did you make any mistakes along the way uh, while you were considering a bunch of other things to make sure that your project is true to the original intention? So that's why you have to do both. So again, and so this is just an Altium thing. This isn't just with schematics. Anytime you create a new document or library, your first, your first thing should be to save it. Save it and give it a name. So luckily with Altium, your project files, your library files, your schematic files, and your like PCB files all have different file extensions. So you can, if you really want to, name everything the same, just to keep it, if you have a simple board with like one schematic, one PCB. 
then if you look back over here in the projects tab, you see that I have this little red file icon. That means that my most up-to-date version of whatever file that is, is not currently saved. And the one thing, one little key thing about Altium is in all of its checks it does, it refers back to saved files. It doesn't refer to active files. So a lot of times if you're not constantly saving, anytime you make a change to a schematic or a PCB, the software won't know how to kind of interact between the two. It'll still be interacting with older versions. So there's always this save all button up here with the two little save icons. That will go through and just save anything that isn't saved, any changes you've made. So now that we've kind of looked at the projects tab, when you're looking at this blank schematic here, you're like, oh, well, where do I get all my parts to place now? That's great. So we have a couple other tabs over here, the other panels. Um, if they're not over here, you come down to this panels tab and choose whichever ones you want. In this case, let's take a look at the um, components tab. Oh, there, I just closed it. but. So here's the components tab. Um, Altium comes with these two uh, libraries initially installed, miscellaneous devices and miscellaneous connectors. Um, it's pretty good for anything simple, you know, like header pins, um, resistors, capacitors, diodes. Um, so say I wanted to place a, just a, we'll choose a resistor to be simple to start with. Can you come up to the search bar, type, resistor and you see a bunch of different resistors um, it's important to look at is their footprints that's generally um, going to determine which one you choose so in this case say I, I know I have a through hole resistor in your designs you'll probably be using a SMD resistor um, yes yeah, so we'll use an SMD resistor instead so when you choose a part you come down to this further down here and it will show you both the schematic symbol that you're going to be using as well as the footprint when you get into the actual layout of your board. You can switch between 3D and 2D views. Um, you're also able to adjust for any, like if say a part like this resistor has multiple footprints naturally built into it, and you're able to choose which one you want to use from there. So now that I've decided that this is the resistor I want to use and this is the footprint, I can just simply double click it. And now it's on my cursor to place. So I wanna place just a couple of them down, wherever. Again, this is just kind of an introduction to using Altium. We're gonna go more in depth in building proper schematics next time. But um, once you place down any type of device or connector, um, you're able to double click it and open up its properties tab. So if you did have a mouse, how would you kind of move around the schematic, uh, you know, pan, zoom in, all, all those like... Yeah, so to pan, you would right-click and drag. Zoom would be control scroll wheel. And then if you wanted to just lock yourself going left or right, I believe you can do shift scroll wheel, and it'll adjust you left and right in smaller increments. So a couple ways to get to the property tab, actually. Obviously, you can just open it up and it'll, whatever you click on, it'll bring you to the properties of. If that's not there, you can go to the panels menu, pull it up, or you can just simply double click on the part you wanna edit the properties of. There's actually one other way where when you're placing a part, say you wanna edit its properties before you place it down, you can click tab. It'll pause your little placement window and it'll allow you to edit the properties. So here for a resistor, you have your designator, which don't worry too much about right now. That's what all team is gonna to use to refer back to your part. Um, when you have multiple like resistors in the same thing, it'll be like an R1 and R2 and R3, but we'll have all team automatically number that for us later. A comment is more for yourself. It's a short blurb that you'll be able to see on the schematic to identify said resistor. You can hide the comment if you want. Uh, you could hide the designator if you want as well. If you look down at the resistor that I'm currently placing, you'll see all the stuff appear and disappear as I click the site buttons. And then also, then you have a description. The description isn't something that's going to show up on your schematic, but you know, if you want to write a little bit more about the part, um, just so anytime someone clicks on a part, they can see that. Now, say you want to edit the value of the resistor. So this is default to one kilo ohm. You can either do it in this properties window here, and you can edit the value in this table down here, or on an already placed part, 
you can double click the value itself and adjust it from there. So obviously different parts have all kinds of different properties. Um, this resist, most um, simple, you know, are you a resistor, capacitor, inductor? The only important one is like the value. But um, when we get into actual design, you'll see more in depth things. If you want to move a part around that you've already placed, it's pretty simple. You can just click and drag around. So up here is kind of your, your active toolbar. It has a couple different controls. Any of these little tabs that have these little arrows in the bottom right corner means they can be right clicked and choose from a couple of different options underneath it. Um, to lay wires, you can either, you can see the little bar there says place wire control W. So you can do control W or you can come up here, click wire and now you're in wire placement mode. Drag some wires around. So anytime you terminate a wire from a start point to a defined endpoint, i.e. like a component input or output, that wire will stop drawing. But say I want to have this wire come to like here, but not go any further, I can now right click and it stops placing that wire. Similarly, now I say I wanna stop placing wires altogether, I can right click again and I'm out of the wire placing mode, I'm back to a normal selecting cursor. Now let's take a look at manufacturer part search. So most of you for SDP will be using manufacturer part search as your um, main source of complex components, say like microcontrollers or different ICs that you're using on your PCB. It is possible to create the footprint yourself in Altium, but if that footprint's already created, there's not necessarily a good reason to do it yourself other than for experience. Um, and we'll be doing more tutorials on creating custom parts towards the end. It's a more advanced uh, concept. So in the manufacturer part search, say I'm using the ESP8266 microcontroller on my project. I can search for that in manufacturer part search and a bunch of options come up. You can see some breakout boards, a bunch of stuff. What's great about Altium is that it tells you a little description, it's category, as well as some pricing info. It actually checks uh, a ton of different suppliers. So if you scroll to the left there in that window, can you see the, yeah, so those four SPNs, if you okay, that yeah. drop down, you're gonna get all the suppliers and you can compare their prices in real time, I think. So say you're searching for your parts and you find the one you like, this ESP chip per, per se. If it has this little green IC chip icon next to it, that means that there's a model for it available for both schematic and its PCB footprint. And as you can see down here, there it is. I think your mouse, part. I think your mouse is not exactly pointing. I think your mouse is lagging behind or something, but okay. uh, that, that little footprint we're talking about is right to the left of the description. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just this, I'll stay here for a second until it moves. So that guy right there, a little green chip set. And then when you hover over, it says has models for a lot of the parts in manufacturer part search, there's for each given footprint, there's a couple different models, a high density, medium density, and low density model. Uh, you can choose from here. And essentially what that chooses is how long the leads on the footprint are. Uh, for anything we're doing for SDP, I would suggest you just use the low density model. It'll say in the little text below, and it's usually the underscore M. Just it'll make your life easier when soldering apart, give you bigger pads to solder onto. So once you've selected the model you like, you're gonna right click on the part and click place. Now it takes all the information it has on the part and moves it into your schematic essentially. There you go. Now I right click to stop placing. Now I have this chip that I'm using in my project here. It has all the pins that are labeled for me. They're labeled as input outputs, power, or just inputs. So then I guess the last thing I want to talk about today in this video is what happens when the parts you want are not in manufacturer part search. So luckily, uh, DigiKey has a very wide variety of parts available as manufacturer, uh, I'm sorry, not DigiKey, Altium. They have partnered with Snap EDA actually. And so they get most of their footprints through Snap EDA, I believe. And that's what you're seeing for manufacturer part search. When you choose a component from here, it's automatically grabbing it from 
SNAP EDA. And what SNAP EDA is, is it's an online library of uh, footprints for various electronic components. Um, it's totally free. You just have to make an account and then you know, download footprints for Altium. They have all kinds of different file types for the different PCB design softwares, but you know, we're using Altium. I just wanted to mention them. I have a feeling that most people, your footprints will be available in the manufacturer part search that you use, but in the off case that they're not, you could use snapeda.com. Uh, it's kind of your first option for parts not available. So when you download a part from Snap EDA, unfortunately, my screen is a little messed up right now and I can't show this totally. But when you import a part from Snap EDA, it actually comes to your components library. You can see here, I have the ESP8266 already downloaded and imported from the Snap EDA file. And here it is. Another version of that component, but it's for the same chip. You can see like the different number of ports match up. I think we should let people know to like, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> Cause it, yeah. there's a little process, right? You gotta go through the import wizard yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, if you have any type of part issue that uh, you can't find manufacturer part search, you can always talk to one of us, me, Chris, Remy, any other M5 staff that has all team experience and we can guide you through uh, getting a part from Snap EDA or some other online resource and getting that imported into Altium because it's not necessarily a straightforward procedure. Um, we'll probably have a video tutorial on that later in the series, similar with the custom part design, uh, custom component design. So uh, I think that's all I want to cover today. This has just been kind of an introduction to the Altium interface, getting familiar with the most important panels that we're going to be using in the uh, upcoming videos on building an actual circuit. Um, if you guys have any feedback you'd like to tell us, please let us know. These will probably still be making this video series when the first couple ones get uploaded to YouTube. I hope you found them helpful so far. I know we haven't really done much importance, but there is a lot of groundwork that needs to be laid before we move forward. You know, all teams a steep learning curve. So I've been Jimmy. And I don't know if uh, Chris and Remy wanna say something. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, it's good that you're here and you're watching this and it's good that there's a lot of groundwork to go through first because the truth is, Altium is one of those things where it's a skill that you really need to build and work on. And your first project or even your first couple projects might not go so well. Uh, it's going to take a couple tries to get it right. And you want it to be right before you actually design your significant hardware component. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. That's all. Please leave your questions in the comments or uh, DM us or whatever you need to do. Email us. I don't know. Yeah. Um all set subscribe leave a like 